I'm just nipping into town to pick up some lining paper. You know the kind you use on your walls. No, we're not wallpaper in the unit. What we are going to do is put that lining paper atop the tank so I can draw around it and then get a template for each lid and then we're going to go ahead and cut plywood for them as well today. So it's a short day, I'm on child duty this afternoon and I've had to run in town once already to the post office to get that license application off tracked delivery this time. It'll be there for one o'clock tomorrow, guaranteed, she tells me. So that's in. We just need to get this kit up and running now, so let's go and get some lining paper. I'll be right back. Hmm. No, I didn't need breakfast. Trekking mix. A pound. Bird food, really. So I've got uh, three types of lining paper. All different grades, see which one fits the best. I can use it for other projects in the future. This one's 800 grams a square metre. That's a thousand grams per square meter. And this one, the piece de la resistance, is <clears throat> banana in my throat. Oh, this one's uh, 1400 grams per square meter. So we'll of course try with the thinnest and work our way up till we're happy with it. The difference in price was the best one was twice the price of the budget one, 250 a roll, five quid a roll, and the one in between was three pound fifty or something. Right, I'm gonna get changed and make some lids. Right, I'm uh, sporting an MKM free t-shirt, but I don't endorse MKM in any way, shape or form. They are a damn sight cheaper than Juicens, fucking hell. Anyway, uh, I'm doing my little Neil Buchanan bit now. This is Art Attack. For those of you in the States, you'll not know Art Attack. It was a kids TV show that uh, had this dude on it who just made stuff and a, and a plasticine or Play-Doh man called Morph. We've got a bit of two inch wide masking tape which I've managed to cock over. So that'll do the job like, lad. Chuck this bad boy up here. Oh, and it turned out not big enough. Back to the drawing board. The things I do to get the shot. We're back. Right, let's try again. Oh, just, just lovely, mate, just lovely. So what I'm going to do is tape it down to the tank on the four corners, trim off the excess, and then do a rubbing, if you like, of the top. Also mark the front, just so I know where the front of the tank is. And then that will allow me to put it back on the correct orientation. Well, there you can see we've now got a rough shape. Now I'll take my trusty red sharpie, draw a line off the tank and onto the edge of the tank. And then I'm basically just going to go around and... Now we'll take it off, back into the shop, cut the paper out nice and neat, stick it onto some steel, draw around it on the steel and then cut the steel out with a plasma cutter. So I'll have to charge up the compressor. <laughs> these subjects with an air of caution. This is the lid off of FV1 that we did the other day. You recall it's got the cleaning thing in the jig and the thing in there. 
Anyway, that means that the uh, the lids that we put on there, the timber, sorry, that we glue on, has to be donut shaped, like quit, to allow access to the RJT nut in the centre with an RJT spanner. Um, and therefore, I need to test the concept before I cut all the other lids. Three quarter inch plywood's quite expensive. So I'm gonna put on hold the other template that we've just cut out. I'm gonna put this on a piece of what were. I'm gonna put this on a piece of plywood and we're gonna make the first one. I don't have anything to stick it down with yet, but it looks like either Gorilla Glue or CT1's winning the race. But I do I did watch a video and pink grip is like the cheapest thing you can buy and it's it's got that flexibility in there which will cope with the steel expanding and contracting through temperature changes. Don't know if Gorilla Glue will hold up to that either. It shouldn't be a big issue. One or two people mentioned sticking some stainless bolts or nuts on there so I can remove the lid. The trouble is I'm going to warp all the steel by welding them on and it's already hard enough to get it flat anyway. And whether one, two, three, four bolts is going to create a flat surface onto the timber uh, is debatable because of the flex in the steel, it's quite flexible. So I sort of need one every four inches or so, and then I have to span them in as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see where I'm going here. So I'm hoping that Gorilla Glue, tons and tons of, like I lay it flat on the table and just pile everything I've got on it to crush it down, uh, holds the lid on. And I won't need any handles on it because I've got one in the centre. But I might, I might just put another handle on so it's like a two-handed lifted job. So we'll screw that to the timber uh, before, before we put the timber on the metal, of course. Right, let's get a bit of plywood up and uh, let's cut this beast down. We've only gone and got the good stuff, boys. We've got the good stuff. It's expensive, this uh, plywood, you know. It's not like it grows on trees. Okay. Right, good cut there. Save a significant amount of timber, so I've got a nice off cut. Line it up with the edges. Beautiful. Right, let's do this. So we've got her cut, she looks tip top, I'm really pleased with it. It's heavy, it does weigh a little bit, but that's not going to be an issue. I will put another handle on there at some point. I've decided that I'm going to varnish after I've glued it onto the, uh, onto the steel. That way the glue can soak into the grain of the timber and hopefully give it a bit more grabbage. I think that's a good thing. And then we'll just varnish the whole lot afterwards. And of course if I get any varnish on the steel, just scrape it off with a, with a scraper. I can scrape the varnish straight off. Not an issue. So uh, yeah, we just have to decide what glue we're going to go for. And... Uh, 
and cut the rest of them. So I'm happy to continue with this now. I've tested it. It looks the nuts. We may have to revisit the cleats and the clips on the top, how they sit on there. So there's a, there's a real chance that I might be disposing of these. They were only like 77 pence each or something. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll be able to use a different kind of clip now that we've got that. Maybe something that screws onto the timber and clips and clacks around another type of toggle clamp. But, uh, well, if you spot any, leave me a link in the doobly-doo, but I'll be having a look on eBay later on tonight, I think. I've got three-quarter inch ply to play with, and it wants to reach down three-quarters to an inch, and then grab and pull. That's how we're going to have to do it. It'd be better if I could have the clamps on the lid, actually. It'll totally free the top of the tanks, then. We brought the plasma into the workshop, because I've cleaned out there, and I want to keep it that way. So let's fire up. Contact. It's three o'clock. Managed to get three cycles cut. So we've got the three cycles for all of the lids now. The uh, Mashton already has a lid, as you know. We've got the circle down there for the first fermenter. I've got a boil kettle lid and all the fermenter lids. And I've also lined up all the tanks on this side of the building. I'm standing where we're going to put a gangway to get access into them. And on this side, we're figuring out whether to cut some drainage down there or not. I'm still unsure. But that's by the by anyway. I'm going to have to shoot and uh, pick up the kiddies now. Well, I've been given specific instructions. Abigail wants bolognese. What? And I've got to cut the grass outside. It's super long. So we're not going to waste the afternoon. It's quarter to four. Grass cutting time. There's a bit of a before shot. You reckon the nabs? Yeah, that is already fine. Another couple. And there's the after shot. Job well done, eh, Abs? Me being scared of chickens. Yeah, you're scared of the chickens. Hey. Well, that's the lawn mowed front and back. And now I think all I'm going to do is grab a can of beer and sit under the lovely looking cherry blossom. Would you just take a look at her? She's a beauty. And put my shades on, it's bloody bright out here. Right, I think that's it folks. We'll see you tomorrow.